And past the hour, joining us from Richmond, Virginia, Senator Tim Kaine. Senator, uh, good to have you uh, on Thanks, board, Mika. especially a member of the Armed Services Committee. We've got some questions for you on a bunch of issues. We'll start with ISIS. Mike Barnacle's got the first one for you, Mike. Senator, uh, in this undeclared war against ISIS, where do you stand in terms of declaring war or formalizing the fight that we are having with so many tribes in the Middle East? Uh, Mike, we have to do it. Today's the 10th month anniversary of the, uh, of the war against ISIL. Started on August 8th, about two and a half billion dollars, 3,500 bombing runs. We've lost American troops in this operation. Our hostages have been beheaded. Uh, it's absolutely shameful that Congress hasn't done an authorization for use of military force. I introduced one in September that got a vote in the Foreign Relations Committee in December, but it then died on the floor. Uh, later today, because of the 10th month anniversary, Senator Flake from Arizona and I are going to reintroduce an authorization, trying to make it bipartisan so that Congress will finally do its job. What difference would it make? Well, he here's the difference it makes. Right now, if you're ISIL, you have no evidence, none, that Congress cares about you at all. If you're a, an ally of the United States, you have no evidence at all that Congress cares about the battle against ISIL, but especially if you're one of the 3,500 American troops who are deployed thousands of miles from their home in this theater of war, risking your lives every day, you have no evidence that Congress cares about this at all. It is constitutionally required for Congress to do this, and that's for a reason. We shouldn't be risking our troops' lives unless we're willing to have the debate shape the mission give the president authority and then our troops know that they have us behind them but if we're not willing to do that we shouldn't order them to risk their lives well, what would be the cause for war what would be the causes belli here what would what would be the cause that would uh, cause us to formally declare war and reoccupy for a period of time or reinvade for a period of time another middle eastern country well, ISIL, ISIL has declared war against us, and ISIL is killing Americans, and ISIL poses an immediate threat, but also a long-term threat to the security of the region. But, uh, but I want to pick up on your second point. I don't view this as one where we should be reoccupying. I think that would be a mistake. The region has to stand up against its own terrorist threat. And if they do, then we should be supporting them with bombing campaign, for example, such as we're doing today, and maybe some additional efforts that can help them succeed. We can't police a region that won't police itself. But the ISIL does pose a threat to the United States. We've already lost lives in this mission and we'll lose more if we don't support a vigorous regional effort to defeat ISIS. Mark Halperin. Senator, I know that Congressional Division has in large part accounts for the fact that there hasn't been the kind of authorization you would like. But what do you say to your friend the President? Should he be being more energetic and urging Congress to vote on something to provide that authorization? Mark, I hope the White House will lean in more. You know, they didn't send a draft authorization to Congress until the war was in its seventh month, and that was really late when they sent it to us in February, but now it's been four months since the, since the White House sent us the authorization and Congress has done nothing. It's time for us to but act. Sen Senator, with all due respect, you said you hope they would lean in more. Shouldn't the Commander-in-Chief, if, if, if the authorization is required, shouldn't the Commander-in-Chief be demanding action from Congress? Well, Mark, there is a debate. The, the executive says that the existing 2001 authorization gives them the authority to conduct this military operation. I strongly disagree with that, but there is some uh, legal back and forth over whether the earlier authorization is sufficient. But when the president sent the authorization over in February, he said, look, regardless of the legalese here, this is a war that's going to go on for a while, and our troops deserve to know whether Congress is in support of this mission. But doesn't that for mean four months, we've done nothing. And so now it is our time to act. But again, based on your accurate chronology of the history, doesn't that lead you to say that the president should be demanding, because of the troops, because of the signal it will send of unity, shouldn't the president be demanding that Congress put aside other business and deal with this now? It, it is my hope that they will. I will say I've been talking to the White House about this effort. Again, Senator Flake and I are putting in a bipartisan uh, draft authorization today, uh, and the White House is very much encouraging us to do that. They're not, they're not indifferent to it. Uh, in fact, uh, as I talk to officials, uh, national security officials in the White House, they're frequently asking, what's going on on the authorization? We sent it to you in February. Will you act? Obviously, the Foreign Relations Committee just took a 
tough issue, uh, what Congress should do vis-a-vis -vis an ultimate Iran deal, and turned it from a partisan issue into a bipartisan outcome. Mm. And I have great confidence in Senator Corker and Senator Cardin that even though this issue is tough, if we start the discussion, I think we can find a path forward to put our support behind Senator, our troops. Senator, I want to just ask you about Hillary Clinton and some politics now. How do you think uh, her campaign is going in terms of how she's running it? There, there's critiques that she's not taking questions and maybe even some concern that that could pile up and hit her hard when she really, later, when she really should be getting a little roughed up right now and more nimble on the trail. Yeah. Me Meek, I actually like the way that the campaign is starting. I think this, you know, going to voters in smaller settings and then giving occasional large policy speeches. For example, last week I thought she gave a superb speech at Texas Southern about the massive pattern of efforts I get that, to restrict the vote. But you know what I'm asking. Vote. You know what yeah, I'm asking. Yeah, I am. I and, am. And but I, I are actually... you concerned at all that she's putting off the hard questions that, that will be asked at some point I, instead no, of I'm, getting I'm not, past I mean, them I think, if there's nothing look, to hide? Every campaign has its pluses and minuses. There have been some external stories about things like the foundation that I think, you know, those have been a little bit challenging, but the campaign itself, the way the campaign is starting, I actually think that they're doing a good job. You served alongside Martin O'Malley, neighboring governors, and Jim Webb in the Senate. Uh, either of those guys uh, able to give her a, a good run for her money to make her better or to, to be better? Who, who do you think is out and there? I, and and I might served it be with Tim Kaine? I serve with Bernie Sanders right now, so mm -hmm. I know Jim Webb very well deep admire. I'm a friend of Martin O'Malley's and I serve with Bernie Sanders. But Look, you know what the I'm asking. <laughs> I do. The de yeah, the Democrats are, we're notoriously uh, unruly, so there is going to be a competition here, you know, and somebody else may get in. Who knows? There will be competition. Um, and, uh, and Secretary Clinton, I think what she showed in 2008, she actually did her best work in the campaign when the, when the times were toughest was my view of the 08 campaign. And uh, so, look, there's going to be competition, but she's the strong favorite for a reason. I support her. I think she's going to be the best president. All right. Somebody's mentioning you as vice president. We'll see if that happens. Senator Tim Yeah, Kane. Congress needs to be fixed. I got a big job. Okay. Good to see you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very Thanks. much.